In this video, I'm going to explain everything that you need to know about bunny.com automations. And by the end of this video, you will be able to create your own automations that save you and your team hours per week. Hey, I'm Patrick and over the past six years, I've helped over 150 companies setting up their monday.com account. If you need help with your Monday project, you can always reach out to me via the link in the description below. So without further ado, let's get started. The first thing we need to do is to start with the basics. So let's get started. To make an automation, click on the robot icon here and go to automate. Then the automation center will show up. At the top, you see two things, create and manage. If you've created an automation in your board before, it will show up as manage to see all your automations. If not, you'll see create. In my case, I've not created anything, so it shows create. That's where we need to be to create new automations. On the left-hand side, we see all types of categories of templates of automations that Monday has created for you. You can definitely use this to get inspired about what's possible. But today we're going to create an automation from scratch so you can learn how you're able to build anything that you want. So let's click create from scratch and then we see this screen. What you need to understand is that automations consist of two parts, a trigger, which is the top part and an action, which is the bottom part. So in human language, when something happens, then do something else. So for example, if we click here, we can actually select the trigger. If you scroll through it, you see a lot of options. In my case, I'm going for a simple one. Let's go for when a status changes to something. If you click there, you'll see that these are gray, which means that we need to do something there. We need to configure it. So let's click on them. For status, we need to select a column. So if there's multiple status columns in your board, you can select you know, one of them. In my case, there's only one. As you can see, it's not gray anymore. So I know that I don't have to configure it anymore. Now we have something which could be, you know, either every time a status changes to anything. So every single time it changes or to a specific thing. So in my case, let's say stuck. When a status changes to stuck, we're going to do something. Something that could be helpful, for example, is to notify a person. So let's click here to create the action and type notify to find the notification trigger. Or oh, sorry, action. Here you find it. And once again, they're grayed out. So we need to do some configuration. Let's click on someone. So who are we going to notify? It could be a people column, could be, which is dynamic. It could be a subscriber of the board, could be a team, could be a guest. In my case, I'm just going for me, for example. Then the notification itself. Here you can add fields from the board itself to your notification. So let's say, hi, this is a test. This is a notification question about task. And then we do, for example, item name for the task name from board. And then we do, for example, board name. And then, for example, the status is status. And this is all dynamic, so it's super helpful in your notification. If you click done and now click create automation, the automation will be created and we can test it. As you can see in our manage section, we now have one automation. So if we go back to the board and click status to stuck, what you'll see here at the bottom left is that an automation is running and it's now done. So if I go to the top right of my screen, I see a bell icon and there you go. This is a test with all the information that we added. So that worked quite well. Now let's go for two more examples so you get the hang of it, so you understand the basics. So let's go to automate, go back to create, or here you can also find create automation, whatever you prefer. One uh, automation I like a lot is when date arrives because once again you have two things that are gray one is your date column which you can just select but one is this one so either when the date arrives at a certain time or we can click here one day before a date arrives or maybe five days or maybe five weeks it's all possible or maybe after or before you can do whatever you want here but i really like this kind of automation so that's one that i wanted to show very interesting one then the third one i want to show to you and by the way as you can see if you want to remove anything you can just click on this bin icon and the third one i want to show you is how to automatically create a list of sub items so let's say you're going to create a youtube video and you always have the same list of things that you need to do then you don't want to type those same tasks over and over again this is where automations can be very helpful so let's say when an item is created we're going to create a sub item there you go create sub item and if you click here you can actually sometimes it's there you go it will load for a second you can create a name so let's say come up with an idea now you would say well patrick how would you do this because with a youtube video you have multiple tasks so we want to have multiple sub items well this is actually possible by using this little plus icon so you can add multiple actions so if we click here 
you can see then create a sub item and then do this so we can create another sub item and we can create another sub item let's create three for this example so the first thing was an idea second thing is record video and the third thing would be edit video you get the point you can also get here some presets for example everything can have a to-do status for example now if we click create automation you'll see that if we start creating an item such as new youtube video it will apply that automation to this item and i think this is a very important concept that you need to understand is that the automations you're adding always apply to the item row it can also apply to sub items if you do something with a certain item then the automation will be applied to that specific item based on your triggers so in my case we just created this item and there you go we have three new sub items with the information that we provided so those are some of the basic examples of how to use automation. Now let's dive into a more advanced one. One of them was already with the extra layer of actions that we just generated, the one here. However, there's one more that I like a lot. So let's create it. If you click create automation and we're going for when date arrives. So in my case, date is actually a due date. So we're going for when a date arrives. But when the date arrives, I only want to notify someone if the task is not done yet. And we're going to do that by clicking on this plus icon here. So we can say when a date arrives and only if a status, for example, is not done. So we're going to notify this person if the status is not done, but the date is arrives. So, hey, there's a deadline, but you haven't finished it yet. Then we're going to notify the people column and then the person. So, you know, this could be um, the person that's assigned to the task. So we're going to say, hi, this task is due today. Please finish it. There you go. And this is how you can use different multiple layers of triggers if you want to have only one action. But as you can see, you can also add more layers. Just keep clicking on the plus icon and you'll be able to create whatever you want. Uh, there you go. So this was actually a great example. Now, another thing I want to show you is how to leverage sub items with your board. So as you know, we have items and we have sub items. And this is actually also applicable in automations. So if you click on automate and we go to create a new one, if we go to the simple example of status changes, what you can see here is that we have a column here on the item level, but as you can see, we also have it on the sub item level. So if you want to trigger an automation when your sub item status changes, you need to go for this one rather than this one. So pay attention to this small icon because this tells you whether or not an automation is about a sub item. What you will also see is if you create, if you do, for example, when sub item status changes, you'll see that you cannot do anything with an item anymore. Or actually, sometimes you can. It depends a little bit on the automation. In this case, you can. So let's say when a sub item ch status changes to anything, then we're going to change the status of the original item to something else. But you can also change the status of a sub item to something else. So this is something that's important to note that if you're doing something on a sub item level, you can always adjust things on the parent item. So the item that's actually uh, above the sub item. But if you're doing something on the item level, which I'll show you now, then you cannot select sub item here, as you can see, because it doesn't include sub item context. So the automation doesn't know what sub item should be changed because there could be multiple sub items for one item. So keep that in mind. There's a common problem that people run into. Some of the more advanced automations can only be found in the automation center of Monday. So if you go to the automation center, which we are in right now, you'll see, for example, connected and mirror columns. And these have a lot of automations, as you can see here, which are all templates. Most of the time, you cannot recreate those templates from scratch. So if you want to do more advanced things, sometimes you need to use default templates so I recommend playing around with these and looking into them because there's a lot you can do that you cannot do with a normal automation. Another thing that you need to know is that there are some limitations with the columns that you can use in automations. By default, you cannot use formula columns, for example, in your automations. The same thing is true for mirror columns most of the time. So you'll see a few of those columns where you cannot use them in automations. And it's actually very important to know the limits here because otherwise you might run into some problems. There are, however, workarounds. So every now and then, you know, an app comes along that will solve all these problems. And I'll show you a few of those apps that are worth looking into if you run into problems. So if you go to the app marketplace of Monday and you type automation, you will actually find most of the apps that I'm going to mention. So one of them is about sub item automations. It's this one. If you do a lot with sub items, you might run into problems there. I highly recommend this app. Another one is called Auto Boost, very good app to do a lot of different things with 
you know, formula columns and, you know, columns that are not supported by Monday itself. There's also column magic that's worth looking into this one. And there's a lot more. If you just type automation, there will always be an app that solves your specific use case. You might just need to install a few to figure out which one it is. But those three apps are very helpful. Monday recently added an update where you can do some interesting things with mirror columns. So let me just create that for you right now. There you go. So now we have a board with a mirror column on it. And as I'll show you, if you go to automate and go to create automation and you go for when a status changed to something in the status section, the mirror column actually doesn't show up. It's because it's not really supported in automations. However, there's a smart workaround with the new update of Monday, because if you go back you go to your automation center here in the connected and mirror column section there's a new automation that's this one when status changes to something change another status to something it sounds the same as what i just showed but it's actually different so let's click on it if you click status you actually see that the mirrored status will now also show up so we can say when a mirrored status changes to for example stuck then change a normal status column also to stuck let's create the automation and now let's test it. So if we change this to stuck, you'll see that this will change to stuck as well. And that's actually what you can do with mirrored automations. This can be very helpful if you use mirror columns. Just keep in mind that, you know, you would need to use this workaround to then build other automations on top of it. So you could, for example, now build your normal automations based on this status column because it's always connected to this one. There are some limitations here as well, so keep that in mind. If you connect multiple boards, for example, to this board, this automation won't work because Monday won't allow you to build it simply because there can be multiple status labels and then it becomes a bit tricky. So if you want to go with mirror columns, I usually recommend going for an app unless it's as simple as what I'm just showing to you right now. So another thing that's important to know is that some apps within Monday are actually, you know, native Monday apps. So if we go to automate, what you'll see in the create section is that some things such as, you know, emails and activities, which is something in the CRM is seen as an app. As you can see here, emails and activities, same thing with AI and the same thing with work forms, for example. And there's another thing called sequences in the CRM. They're all considered apps. So if you want to do anything with their automations, you need to find the app and click on it to see all the templates that you can use to automate it. Unfortunately, Monday doesn't allow you to add those things in your own automations from scratch at the moment. Hopefully they're going to do it in the future, but I think that's actually more something for workflows, which I'm going to tell about right now. Monday workflows is actually the next step of Monday automations. If you're on the enterprise plan, this is a very helpful thing for you. Fortunately, it's not available on Pro yet. Hopefully it will be in the future, but if you're on an enterprise plan, you'll find this logo on the top right of your screen. If you click there, you will go to the workflow center and here you can add a new workflow. This is very similar to something like Make or Zapier, and I'm going to show you what it is right now. So let's give it a name, new workflow. Basically, when you start doing a lot of if this, then that statements within Monday automations that I just showed, it will get messy. You need more something like a canvas. So what we have here. So this is actually very similar. So when, for example, status changed to something on a certain board, let's click through the options, then you can do other stuff. And here it becomes interesting because it looks similar, but it's different. So for example, we can wait, which is not possible in a normal automation. We can do if else. So for example, if status is yes, then do this. And if it's no, do this. And we can do things like a multi-branch thing. So if a status matches X, do this. If it matches something else, do Y. We can do a lot more actions. So they're going to add a lot of interesting things here. And the interesting thing is you can refer to things that have happened in an earlier step of the process. I'm going to make a complete video on Monday workflows, but this is actually the way more advanced option building automations. It's still in development, so there's a lot of things that there it's actually missing, but over time it's actually getting better and better. And I think it's already at a pretty good place. So if you wanna take your workflows to the next level, I would recommend checking out Monday workflows. If you would prefer to stay on the pro plan, I would highly recommend that you check out make.com. It's actually a platform that is similar to what you saw in Monday workflows. It's a pretty cheap platform, by the way. It's like 10 bucks a month to get started and you can build very advanced workflows. The downside is that it requires a bit more technical knowledge. I'm going to cover videos about that in the future on my channel as well. So if you like that, just subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching. If you thought this video was helpful, please leave a like and subscribe to the channel. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments and I'll answer all of them to help you as much as possible. And if you need help with your own project, you can reach out to me via the link in the description. 
Um, by the way, I also have a cool other fun thing. If you want free weekly monday.com tips, you can also subscribe to my free newsletter, which you can find in the description below as well. Hope you'll like it and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.